everyone welcome back in this video we will see module 6 querying management information by using sim and wmi so in this module there are three lesson first understanding sim and wmi the second one querying data using sim and wmi and the last one would be making changes by using sim and wmi so that will be a lab session also in this lesson that we will see it in the separate video so wmi stands for windows management instrumentation and uh, sim stands for common information model so both provide local and remote access to a repository of management information so that repository that we can use it you know to query the robust information from the operating system or from the computer hardware and from all the installed software as well So let us see the lesson one understanding sim and wmi so in this lesson we will learn about the architecture of both sim and wmi so both these technologies can use to connect to a common information repository so basically that repository holds management information that we can you know query and manipulate so that a repository contains all kind of information so that's a computer system or a device or it includes uh, you know uh, hardware and uh, software even the hardware drivers components rules so we can also you know uh, uh, use that uh, repository for every configuration item and uh, even we can also uh, you know query and manipulate uh, the current state of that items so in this lesson you know we will look at uh, the architecture of both sim and wmi and uh, then we will uh, see the purpose of the repository and then we'll uh, you know see how to locate online documentation for the repository classes So architecture and technologies of sim and wmi so sim is a newer technology that is uh, based on open cross-platform standard meaning we can use it on the linux and windows side as well so wmi has been available on the windows operating system only but sim we can use it for both windows and linux system so both the technologies providing a way to connect the common information repository this is also known as wmi repository so the partial 3.0 and the newer version support both these technologies meaning um, uh, like uh, this uh, wmi and sim but earlier versions of windows powershell that support only WMI meaning it won't support the sim technology this uh, sim technology support three kind of connections so the first connection would be connections to the local computer so to connect to the local computer it can use DCOM or WSMAN protocol. So DCOM stands for Distributed Component Object Model and WSMAN stands for Web Services for Management. So uh, depending on the uh, command that we use, it would uh, uh, you know, use either uh, DCOM or WSMAN. The second connection would be 
ad hoc connection to a remote computer so to connect to the remote computer we can use the ad hoc command in the sim technology and uh, this would always use the wsman protocol over the http and the uh, third connection would be session based connection to the remote computer and uh, that can use either dcom or wsman protocol so we typically make uh, dcom connections to the uh, wmi service which is part of the uh, windows operating system and uh, wsman connection to the winrm service which is a windows remote management so um, so both i you know the service uh, that uh, meaning uh, the winrm or the WS man the service that we can use for enabling the remoting the Windows PowerShell remoting so WinRM is you know installed by default uh, computers from Windows 7 and the newer version also the WinRM and uh, remoting or enabled by default on Windows 8 and the newer version of the operating system basically the sim command don't you know require you to enable the powershell remoting and also uh, it doesn't require you to uh, you know uh, install the powershell on the target computer and also we can use the uh, sim commands to uh, work with the linux computer as well since uh, that support the cross platform so next wmi commands so WMI commands also use the same repository as SIM commands, meaning both the WMI and the SIM use the same repository, but the way it connects to the repository use the different protocol. So the only difference is how the WMI commands connect to the remote computer because it uses the uh, DCOM protocol and uh, the other one uses the WSMAN. So WMI uh, commands do not support session based connection like uh, the SIM technology support. And uh, this WMI also support the ad hoc connections over a uh, DCOM connection. So now you may have a wondering like uh, whether should you use SIM or WMI. So you should be using SIM commandlets instead of the older WMI commandlet because SIM commandlet use the DCOM when querying the local computer and uh, the SIM commandlets can use the uh, WSMAN for the remote access. So when uh, we want to you know, query the local computer, it will be using the uh, DCOM protocol. And uh, when we query information for the uh, remote systems, then it will be using the WS MAN. And uh, this SIM command lets, you know, we can use it for a DCOM or a WS MAN for the session based connection for the remote computer. So for remote computer, we can choose either DCOM or WSMAN based on the commands that we use. And also uh, the SIM sessions for accessing multiple devices and uh, this SIM improves the way it deals with the WMI association. So uh, we can see um, the difference between the SIM and WMI here. So uh, the SIM does require the uh, Windows Management Framework 2.0 or the newer version, but which is not required for the WMI. And also uh, for SIM, it does require the remoting enabled. So basically the uh, newer version default it will be enabled and sim offer the cross platform compatibility which uh, wmi doesn't offer so we can you know query the linux system as well using sim 
and then uh, sim does require a single firewall port exception and it does support session based connection which is not supported in the wmi however both sim and uh, wmi support the ad hoc connections so uh, both sim and wmi support uh, windows 10 8.1 8 and windows 7 operating systems and similarly the server operating system starting windows server 2008 okay so that's it in this video and uh, i'll see you in the next thank you